How do everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Is it a camera channel? Is it a camping channel? Who knows? I don't know anymore. I don't know what else you're thinking. What's that? Dunno. Getting spots. And I'm nearly in my 40s. Don't know where that's popped up from. Anyway, welcome back to the channel. I'm Ryan Hunter. I'm a photographer based here in the UK, up in beautiful Yorkshire. And I just wanted to talk to you quickly about this little beast. You see that there? This is my Ricoh GR3. Now, if you're in the market for a Ricoh GR3, you've probably already seen tons of reviews on this. This isn't gonna be a technical review in the slightest. This is just kind of real world user review. Um, and if you've not heard of this camera, I hope this tells you a little bit more about it and makes you might wanna check it out. So quickly, what is it? It's a point and shoot camera. It's a fixed lens, 28mm uh, lens, um, 2.8 aperture, um, point and shoot basically. Uh, I think it's 24 megapixel APS-C crop sensor. Um, that's kind of as much technical information as I'm going into. Google the rest of it, go check out some better reviews than this. This isn't a technical review. Um, but I just want to talk to you about a few things that I love about this camera and a couple of things that I don't love so much um, and recently took this away I'm going to show you some sample images at the end of this little spiel um, a ton of sample of images I took this away with us to Copenhagen um, and I also took it on a recent trip with me to the Lake District so I did some camping um, and it's just kind of my everyday camera that I have with me at all times so let's jump into kind of what I love about this camera first of all look how small it is it's absolutely tiny um, shows comparison this is my iPhone 13 Pro and that's the Ricoh GR3 so it's smaller than my iPhone um, it's so compact it literally fits in my jeans pocket just throw it in a hoodie throw it in my coat pocket it there's literally no excuse for me not to take this camera out with me so every time I go out this is with me at all times just in case I've got something that I need to take a photograph of um, it's really lightweight Build quality wise, I mean, it's not a Leica, but it feels pretty robust. Um, it feels good in the hand, it's quite solid. And with the size of it, I don't know how they've managed to do it, but they've made it really ergonomically sound. Like it feels good in the hand, it doesn't feel fidgety. All the buttons are in the right place. Um, you've got kind of aperture wheel here on the front. Um, shutter speed is controlled by this little kind of dial on the back um, and then ISO is controlled by on the back ring here um, and you've got everything menu buttons everything just works well I bought this little thumb grip I don't know if you can see here um, but I don't think I need it but it just makes it again nice to hold in the hand um, and you can just shoot one-handed you don't need two hands to shoot with this camera so the size is one thing I absolutely love about it second thing I love about this camera is the lens genuinely blown away by the quality of the lens on this thing it's a 28 mil I think it's 16 mil 28 mil equivalent uh, full frame it's 2.8 so it's not the fastest lens um, it is sharp AF. Um, I think it's as sharp as the Sigma lenses I use on my Sony's. And no, no arguments on that. It's absolutely outstanding. Um, the detail you get out of it is just amazing. Um, so image quality, I am absolutely blown away. Um, of a camera this size, the power this lens punches, the power this lens packs is amazing. Third thing I love about it is just how easy it is to use. Um, it comes with the app you use is really good. It's called Image Sync. Uh, so I literally just use this. Any photographs I take on this, I just transfer straight over to my phone, quick edit on Lightroom Mobile, um, and I can get them up on Instagram in like a matter of minutes. One of the reasons I bought this, so I wasn't carrying around a big heavy camera that I was having to transport images onto my Mac to edit, to get them back on, to get them online. Literally, I just shoot on this and just transfer them straight to my, straight to my phone. Um, you can do shed loads of like film recipes or picture profiles, whatever you want to call them. So there's like just tons of ways to set your picture profile in camera. There's some presets in there, uh, like standard film, like 
film recipes and kind of film ripoffs, um, black and white presets, but you can adjust the contrast, the saturation, the clarity, everything else in camera. So you can kind of create your own presets in camera. And if you want to shoot just JPEG, you can do and just transfer them straight from the camera. Um, the JPEGs do look class on back of on the back of the camera. Um, I just like editing, so I just shoot everything raw. What else is mint about it? The sheer speed that you can manage to turn this on and shoot. Now I know that sounds quite trivial. Um, I've just got back from walking the Peak District today and I saw this like vintage car that was coming over the bridge. I literally managed to get this out of my out of my pocket, switched on, shoot, there you go. I've just taken a photograph that quickly. Um, straight on, shoot and it's you just you don't miss a shot having something that's this quick and this easy to use in your pocket um, so that's awesome as well and the other function that I really like on this is it's primarily a street photography camera um, so if you're kind of familiar with zone focusing so rather than having autofocus obviously you can set a zone focus so you can set your focus to set your aperture to what you need it to be set your focus distance at I don't know one and a half meters to two meters and then you know that everything from two meters is going to be perfectly in focus and depending on what aperture you're shooting at maybe everything from two meters to infinity is in focus or everything from two meters to six meters is in focus hyperfocal distance Again, go look it up. There's people who know shit loads more about it than I do. Um, but all I know is at f8, set your focus distance to 2.8, and you can just literally shoot from the hip, and you know that everything is going to be in focus from two meters, um, which is brilliant in terms of not missing the shot, especially when you're doing things like street photography or if I'm trying to capture pictures of the kids, my kids. And then the other ace thing is you can flip between autofocus, so you can have half push down autofocus or you can full press and it goes into the snap focus mode which captures everything um, in that zone focus um, so again just really versatile and you can again you can just customize the buttons to do whatever whatever you want them to do um, low light performance it's an APS-C camera it's anything above 3200 ISO you're getting grainy noisy um, images um, anything above that I wouldn't say is particularly usable um, well not on a professional level but you're still capturing the image that you want to capture um, it is a small sensor it's APS-C and the lens is only down to 2.8 the one thing that this does give you though for low light performance is the in-body image stabilization is next level it's like a GoPro um, I don't know how they do it but I've shot handheld at nearly a second uh, shutter speed and have had usable images out of this which is just mental so again if you're shooting still live stuff you can keep your iso low and really open up your sh um, shutter speed um, and the in body image stabilization will let you get away with that in low light um, battery life is all right um, it's not amazing it's not shit um, if you're going out for a full day, definitely take a spare battery with you. I bought one from Rico, rip off 45 quid. Um, they're just these small, they're on the tiny look. Um, 45 quid from Rico. Um, so yeah, I've got two of them. I also bought some cheap knockoffs off Amazon, but they failed on me already. Um, but this camera does have USB-C charging here. So that's the other good thing. So I always carry a battery pack around with me as well. So if I'm in a coffee shop or I'm just chilling in the tent, um, I'll just pop this on charge. Um, so in terms of battery life, you're never gonna run out really as long as you've got um, you got a charging facility with you then you, you're good to go. Um, what I don't like about this camera, and this is the big one. See, see what I'm doing here? There's no viewfinder. And that, I really don't like. You're just literally using the LCD screen on the back, which is all right. In bright sunlight, it, it's the same as any LCD screen. You suffer with it. But just something about having a viewfinder and holding the camera up to my face when I'm shooting um, just makes me feel a lot more connected with the subject and makes me feel like I'm taking a photograph and it makes me I just love that I just love seeing the, the world through a viewfinder um, and this doesn't have one that is a massive con for me 
I don't like, I don't like, I don't love using this camera. Like it's a great tool. It's really good for what it is and capturing images and everything I've said, but I don't look at it and think, oh, I want to pick this thing up and go out and shoot. Um, you can buy like external viewfinders that you can put onto them, optical viewfinders. Ricoh sell one is about 250 quid, rip off, or you can buy cheap ones off Amazon, um, but they're not the best. Um, with the camera being so small as well, um, it's not ideal and you do get a bit of parallax because you're not seeing what the lens is seeing, you're seeing what you're only seeing through the optical viewfinder. Um, that is a massive con for me. Another con which is, I mean, it's only a con if you buy it for this specific reason. The video quality is absolutely garbage. Nonsense, I don't know why they've put it on. Literally no point having video on this camera. You may as well use an old Nokia. So if you wanna buy it for video, don't, it's shit. Some people moan that the back wheel is too sensitive and they change their ISO and their settings. Um, I've not noticed that at all. Uh, well, I've been using this camera. Um, and that's pretty much it from a from cons point of view. I mean, it is what it is. It's a point and shoot. Um, I bought it as an alternative to the Fujifilm X100V um, because I just can't get hold of one like anyone else in the world right now. And I have not been disappointed. Again, image quality, I'm absolutely blown away. Unbelievable image quality that comes out of this camera. Um, love the focal length 28 mil. The lens is outstanding. I don't really have many bad words to say about this other than the fact it doesn't have a viewfinder and that could be the reason why I get rid of it <laughs> because it just doesn't make me want to pick it up and go shoot and I doesn't feel inspired and my Sony's that I use for professional work they are a tool they're, that's what they're for they're to get the job done I want an everyday camera that makes me want to go out and create and be inspired and shoot um, this just doesn't make me want to do it but i will keep hold of it until i find an alternative out there that's that can does do what it does but from as a travel camera amazing this thing is that's it goes in your pocket doesn't even take up any of your hand luggage um going into the mountains with it outstanding just put it in my little bum bag <laughs> i've got a bum bag um rather than lugging up my big cameras and big lenses um Everything about it is just a wonderful camera. So go go check it out. If you're in the market for a point and shoot, I could highly recommend the Ricoh GR3. If you are like me and a bit wanky when it comes to wanting a viewfinder, then unfortunately it's not the camera for you, but hope you've stuck around this long. Anyway, I'm gonna fire up some um, sample images that I've been taking on this camera um, since I've had it um, from the recent trip to Copenhagen and um, a couple of trips to the mountains and any other photos that I think are worth showing you. But thank you for watching. If you let me know what you think of the GR3, let me know in the comments down below. If you're thinking of getting one, if you've got one yourself, um, let me know what you think. Hit subscribe, like, all that stuff. It really helps the channel out. And um, yeah, see you on the next one. Cheers.